I guess uh, uh, I was going to say um, sort of to Laura's point, which is a, which is a good one about um, you know when things are going really well as it did for Canada, it's really in, incumbent on the on the staff um, to maintain perspective and stay level headed and honestly evaluate the team's performance and you know I think it's 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 very likely that after the Slovakia game for instance which was a lot tighter than anybody would like it and maybe the tighter than people thought it would be that they probably had that sort of discussion like as Laura's suggesting that hey we won the game but what do we have to do better or, or here's what we need to do better and then they go out the next game and blow Switzerland out 10 nothing. But so then again, to, and again, to Rick's point, you start building that momentum where you're, you're just like rolling. And so I was a little nervous going into the Finland game thinking, Oh man, has it been too easy to this point? And then they're totally dominant against Finland for the first two periods, like almost as good as I've ever seen a team play in terms of puck decisions and territorial advantage and goal score, everything. So they just had a hit on all, and then they go out and do it again against um, in their next two games. But it's a really important point that it's definitely up to the coaching staff to maintain perspective, stay grounded, and make sure the players are honestly evaluating uh, both the team game overall and their individual games. Um, so it's a really, really good point. And again, I don't think you hope you lose, but Obviously, everybody knows that a loss in this short-term event doesn't mean it's over. It's a chance to refocus and see, uh, experience some real adversity. But so, all good points. Tim, you brought up the uh, the Finland game uh, as, as far as where they are moving forward. When I watch that game, and I watch Dylan Cousins make two really strong efforts to make sure he got that empty net goal in a game that he didn't need it. That, that to me was a signal that they are getting to that point where it's play until it's done. Don't worry about anything else. And, and I didn't ha as yet have an opportunity to see either the semi or the final games because I was working. But to Wally's point, when he watching them come into the rink and see if I'd have seen the Canadians uh, happy go lucky and smiling, I'd have had the same reaction he did that they're not ready today. And it, and I'm sure that the coaches talked to that, addressed it, talked to it. But the players don't buy into it. If they get it in their head that they've got it all figured out now, again, that's to Laura's uh, question. They're not willing to listen. They need to have a wake-up call that's going to be an in-life experience for them to understand what lesson you're trying to deliver there. And sometimes in the short term, that's that's tough to do. I think I think it's a good observation, you know, Wally, that you made that the difference of the two teams coming into the building, which uh, I think somebody, maybe Malcolm or Al, uh, pointed out. You know, it's part of the home team mentality versus the visitor underdog mentality. Um, but the other point is that's really interesting is, um, you know, th there's a there's a continuum there of game face versus being relaxed and prepared. And, you know, I, I guess on the one hand, it's easy to say they were too relaxed, too happy-go-lucky. But, you know, and again, Laura's coached females. I've coached females. So many of us have. The, in the female game, you want some of that relaxed, happy element in your game preparation. Because if it's not there, if there's too much game face mentality – I think it hurts, I mean, not all female athletes or players, but, um, and so many, and I've said many times before, I think the guys can learn something from the females instead of having game face on all the time. Uh, they could, they could move a little bit towards being more relaxed and enjoying themselves in the moment. And, and the girls maybe move a little bit or to the middle of the spectrum and have a bit more of a game face. So there's that whole dynamic that sort of enters in there. But I, I definitely think it translated to the to the game. Like the U.S. were just more focused and determined absolutely in the first period, even though Canada didn't dominate the first 10 minutes, but they controlled the first 10 minutes. I still think the U.S. looked a lot more sort of focused and determined. 
So just interesting psychological elements. The, the, the common um, thought is if your teams win like they did against Russia, how are you supposed to react as a coach in the dressing room after that game to prepare for the next one? So how would you react? Well, I think the common way is to get off your high horse. You had a hell of a game, but to prepare for the next one, you know, I never thought of it now, but the way they looked going into the arena, you're reading body language after games. You're reading body language going back to the hotel and reading body language coming back to the rink. But you you set the stage. You begin coaching for the next game immediately after that game's over. And there's, there's no time to celebrate. And it's easy in retrospect to, to say that and do that. But, you know, the, com- the common thing is you bring them down to earth because that's one game. It was a hell of a game. I'm glad we had it. But there is no celebration here. So, who knows? It's easy to talk about now because you're not there. You're not in the middle of it. I, I do know Mike Dick, the assistant coach. And I'm going to talk to him. And maybe I can get him to come on for a call to give us an inside story on his take and these kind of things. But I might do that one-on-one with him see how comfortable he would be. Uh, But I know Mike was the one coach when I watched the bench. He never reacted. He had that even keel persona about him. And he was walking, not the length of the bench, but to the head coach and communicating with him and going back. But after a goal was scored against him, I watched how he reacted. And I watched the head coach roll his eyes and throw his head back. And that's what I'm reading. I'm watching coaches coach. And uh, how the players play isn't as important to me. So I'm just studying the game from that point of view. And um, it's all good stuff. Like this whole this whole thing hmm. is, is really good stuff. I So here's so here's a question. Um, and uh, Sorry to your point, Wiley, like and it would be interesting to hear from Mike, but I, I'd be really surprised if after the Russia game, <laughs> the talk in the room wasn't very much like an NHL playoff game where they won game one or game two or game three of a series where, okay, good job, great job, that game's behind us, let's get ready for the next challenge. I'd be very surprised if that wasn't the, the talk and the mentality. But here's the question. Every game, the Canadian players were going into the rink, waving at the fans, smiling, everything else. So, do you, as a coach, do you tell them not to do that before the championship game? And what message does that send if you tell them not to do it? Well, that's your call if you're the head coach. I'm I'm asking you, like, would you would you change it? And what do you think message that sends if you ask them to say, "Hey, guys, don't wave at the." People don't wave at the cameras. No, no, I, I can't answer that. I, I have to be there to answer it. But, you know, I can't talk about it theoretically. I'm talking about it, um, you know, just talking about it after the fact. And it's easy to do that. Hindsight's so 2020. But well, that, that's, that's the whole idea of it. I'm not going to coach that those scenarios moving forward. But I am saying what we're talking about is if one of those coaches, if Mike, after talking to me or to us, gets to coach moving forward, he's going to be a much better coach because he's been a part of a debrief, an engaged conversation and debate in a real life situation that he's been through. And he's likely going to head coach that team down the road. And, and don't don't get me wrong. I think it's a very interesting observation, but it, but it is true that they did it every single game, and so it, it, it's a valid coaching question: is 
kind of not on not on like Kim's point. Like, do you when when everything's going great and if you've if you've got your team where you think they're grounded, yeah, do you change something just to go into a championship game? It's like yeah. you know that's over coaching and that might be or well, might be over coaching that might be micromanaging. Uh, but it still does point to the mentality going into the rink. But they've been successful doing that uh, to that point. So it's, you know, that's why, um, you know, you just have to. I'd sure like to know how they walked into the rink before they played Russia. It was the same. Yeah, it was the I, same every game. I didn't. I didn't see them walk into the rink before Russia. But no, it was, neither did I. You know, but that's that's the point. Did their body language change? It was the same, Wally. Like, I, I watched all the games. They they showed a little clip in the pregame show of every game of them walking into the I rink. Think I wouldn't do anything. I'm just saying, hypothetically, I wouldn't do anything. You know, I, I miss, what, with the way we've done things worked. It worked for that game. It's going to work for the next game. Um, but here it's a factor. And to me, it's a mute factor because they walked in with them and they saw them. And I'm sure... You're constantly alert with your antenna to to those kind of things. And I, I don't know about you, Tim, but when you were at Sochi before games in terms of the girls' faces and their mindset and their readiness. Um, Torino. To Torino, you, you could you could tell they were in the zone. They they were ready to play. The we, same, we were pretty much always that way. Honestly, yeah. that was such a freaking yeah. great group. I honestly don't remember. I, I do often have, my, and I'm not always correct. I do always have my radar up in terms of, as we all do, in terms of, you know, are we too loose? Are we too tight? Like, where where are we at? The one story in that mode that I, I've told before is I, I, I knew we were in trouble. Um, and to preface it, like the old football coach at Oklahoma won many national championships. Uh, Woody? Uh, wait, uh, I can't think of his name. But anyway, one of his things was, um, you know, you want your players laughing and loose before a big game. And so I, I sort of took that lesson and I told this, what I, what I thought was a pretty funny story and sort of to your point about the Ottawa coach, told a pretty funny story before the warm-up of our first game at the national championship with UFC. Tom, you might remember if you were there. And I told this funny story. Uh, right before he we went out for a warm-up, dead silence. Dead silence in the room. Not a laugh. And I'm like, I walked out of the room and I'm like, oh, Christ. <laughs> we are tighter than tight can be. And that's the way we were. Uh, for the whole first period, we fumbled and bumbled around, and um, so it just, you got to read your team, obviously, um, and it would be interesting, again, from Mike, did they have any sense that they were either nervous or overconfident? I don't think they were probably a group that would be overconfident. I think they might have been a bit nervous or tentative, but be interesting to know. Yeah, no, no, it's it's, it's good. It's really good. Anyway, I've got a, uh, I got another Zoom call at n at noon here, so I want to jump off and grab a a bit of bit of something to eat before that. But again, really uh, really enjoyed this, everybody. Laura, great to have you on. Um, oh, you know, always enjoy having you and Kim and Carla on when she gets on or. Anybody else? It's awesome. So, so yeah. uh, look yeah. forward to next week and have something okay. else throughout. I'm likewise. I've got things to do here at home. My wife is uh, going through a bunch of tests this week, so I'm uh, on duty here at home trying to figure out what I can do to help out. And uh, I want to thank you all for getting on. Thanks, Laura. And have you talked to uh, Dominic since we've talked? Uh, no, I sent him an email a few days ago, um, but I haven't heard back from him yet. You, do you know where he is, if he's in Calgary or if he's in... I have, I have no idea. I thought he was in California still, but yeah, he may I, have moved around since then. Yeah. I'm going to text him just to see where he might be. So, 
Okay, everybody, I've got to run. So thank you very much for your time and really good to get on again. Yeah, thanks so much, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey, see you, everybody.